for like a few hours and shit. Mm. Like you and I, Riley, Eddie and I like I've been banned from Facebook five times. I've been banned from Twitter three times. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just funny as fuck. I was like, damn, I'm just kind of sitting right now though. Like, it's crazy, yeah. Yeah, that is a really funny um, really funny YouTuber went on Jimmy Dore and was like, yeah, I did a, I literally I did a video. And like the double standards between <laughs> how like CNN doesn't get banned, yeah. but then we get banned, yeah. and so I clipped in CNN's reporting, <laughs> and they banned me for <laughs> CNN's yeah. for having the content the that CNN yeah. had. No, not even the copyright. Just the content was like un was not up to their standards. Wow. So the stuff that he had in there. Of CNNs, where they were like, "Oh, this is this is a this is illicit content. This isn't good. We can't <laughs> yeah. have this." So they they hit him you with the for terms the of service videos yeah. that CNN already have in there. That are <laughs> yeah. like they did not, that with the July for the insurrection, for quote unquote, with Jordan Klepper whatever. Videos, yeah, where they, they clipped t- in. They fucking loot. paid him royalties for his videos, and then. They started running all his videos on their channels, and then they started copyright striking him for his own videos. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Because he had a better commentary about it. <laughs> so crazy. Insane. All right, but we're getting sidetracked. Um, so, I don't know how to start this off. We're in the spring garden. Um, I guess, I guess let's just ask, I'll ask this to you. You, you can ask this to me, but... Right? Well, at first I want to start off with, for you, what is the spring garden, I guess? That's what I want to start off with. And then we'll start telling the story of how it came about. Um, well, I mean, it's, it was like the, like my refuge yeah. during that whole, during the whole pandemic. And during a time when it was really, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be plenty other scary times yeah. <laughs> coming up but during a time when I was, it was really dark really depressing and, and terrifying at some points when we were walking through the streets and the, the police have basically declared yeah. martial law yeah and I get back here I'm like okay get, get <laughs> home deep base. breath we're yeah. okay the fucking virus is in here <laughs> we're, we're, we're in a in a safe spot um, and it was started out as something that really, like, y- we could pour all of our creativity yeah, into. Yeah. Um, like it was, it was an amazing it, outlet. Basically. It is like a pure, purely creative yeah. outlet that you don't get to experience in the real the workforce. Yeah, where no you, rules. Yeah, you decide everything. Yeah. Fully. Like, our own our own labor was like belonged to us and yeah, we could once. we could do whatever we wanted yeah. and we did do whatever we wanted <laughs> we did it so good and um it was a it was a beautiful beautiful experience that we 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 didn't just we didn't just you know inherit it too it's something we fought for and mm-hmm. we took mm-hmm. um, and made took back you one yeah, we, we took took back, back. yeah um I don't know. For me, that is like what's the what's the, the biggest parts of it? The like reclaiming of space that like you actually live on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I remember calling the I remember calling Jason that first time that I snapped and <laughs> went insane though, and I was like, I don't care if you have a piece of paper that says that you can do something. Like if I live here, well, who the fuck has the right to say what I have to do? You know what I mean? For any of the residents who has, if you don't live here, you don't have a say in what happens here, right? I mean, like, come on, that's just why that simple. Would, why, why would people who take care of something and who make something better and who improve something not be and who are who, who take responsibility for a space and for their neighbors? Why would they not be? given the power over determining what happens there it's it's just logical yeah it's just logical for for power to come from the place where the people who have the most responsibility over 
over whatever power they're wielding are um, they're the ones who are who are, should be in the driver's seat, not yeah. some not some some leasing company some bureaucrat that's some corporate that doesn't care. They're just person. trying to extract money yeah. out of a out of a project, out of a piece of property, out of a person. Yeah. It you know it makes you realize where um, where it can really be and the benefits that can come from from power being held in the hands of people who who care about something and who 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 have the responsibility that that they um that they own it from their own their own work where they are physically right and um you know when they're when they're part of a, a community too yes yeah i think the community is really important i think that's very important cuz the f- space that we fostered here not only was it just like a cool garden but like it's really a, a space for people to share something in common which you don't have anymore nobody has shared common spaces with their neighbors where they actually interact with them most people don't even know who their neighbors are, you know. Most people see Todd or whatever, and they say, hi, what's up? And then they don't ever talk to them. They don't know. But it should mean something more than that, right? Yeah. It should mean, you know, it's not just, it's not just you see them. It's, it's you're, you're interacting with them. Yeah. You're, you're sharing resources together because of the places that you're living. Yeah. And you're sharing a space so it's like there's there's a cooperation yeah that needs to be involved really it just makes it just makes this sense sense, it just makes logical sense yeah from a rational perspective from a and it also makes sense from a emotional like human need to be in contact with other people because most but most people i'm saying is most people don't think of their neighbor as to that they think of their neighbor as just some dude you know exactly some dude but he's not just some dude you know what i mean he's somebody who coexists with you so like you're gonna have to learn to try and harmonize with his coexistence and y'all can get better together because if you don't then you're just gonna be alienated by yourself like doing nothing you know what i mean definitely so i think that's what this space really like showed in a lot of people here is that like you can have a community where you know your neighbor and you guys fight for certain things together you know and you can confide in each other and shit and like yeah be a part of not just live for just things racing by you like live with people you know not just like a job telling you something to do and then on the weekend you get fucked up or something like you live for like a a family basically that isn't connected through familial ties just because they live there it's just because they're your neighbor you know that's the crazy part about it too is most of these people i would never have even talked to well some of these people you know i already knew and shit but most of these people i would never interact with usually on the streets or in the real world you know what i mean it would not be the type of people i hang out with probably but like it doesn't matter because just because they're my neighbor you learn to like fucking just be like it's that purest form of just like human humanity basically just the person that's next to you doesn't matter who they are or how they are you know just like look out for the person in the cell block next to you you know what i mean well said so let me ask you a question then um tell me about the moment you felt like this became spring garden where it really began for you what was what was the the point where you can is the, that you can identify where where it started. Well, I would say the the when you, we were sitting out here. So t- yeah. minute one, basically, when we were sitting out here before, because this space. For those of you who don't know, I'll probably we'll get to it. Yeah, whatever. I'll describe it later. But like before we came in and did anything to this space, it was just trash, weeds, cigarettes, dirt, like shit you know what i mean and um and uh (laughs) um you know 
so <laughs> hey what's, what's up? up and so wait what the fuck was i saying <laughs> oh trash, right there, there was nothing here basically yeah, and yeah. we were sitting out here on a rotting picnic table and we were like you were like why don't we just do a garden here like that just makes sense and i was like yeah all right i guess i don't have anything better to do and then i remember i think you we were like how you see how that one is sagging there the yeah, picnic yeah. table you just like snapped it with your foot <laughs> and like broke it and i think when you snapped it that was like all right well there we go we're there i think that was the exact moment where i was like okay we're gonna do all this basically yeah this because at that point falling apart yeah because at that point in the quarantine nobody was here at all so the the leasing office wasn't in person so nobody was coming to any properties no maintenance was happening nobody was here so we had the building all to ourselves basically everyone just was shut up in their apartment yeah yeah exactly and i was sitting here going insane like in my apartment just smoking weed right sitting on like the balcony thing and just like looking at people down below going paranoid like seeing someone and i'd be like yo yo what's up try to have a conversation <laughs> like so i was just like why don't why don't I just go out and meet my neighbors and start with that? You know what I mean? And then we started, you know, this whole garden project. And it's like, so at the time when you did that, basically, like I had already been so radicalized, basically. I was already like, oh, this building's just ours. And now, you know, we're just going to do what we want, basically. Because I, I find when people like leave me alone, like I usually, and just give me the freedom to do something, I usually end up like, fucking creating something cool and then when people are a teacher or a boss or something is telling me to do something like I, that's when i stagnate and shit you know what i mean so there's this was like a few a rare moment i think for all of us i think for all of us that's true basically too so like there was a rare moment when we all a whole collective community of people basically all in all three of these buildings had that sense of like to a degree had that sense you know of like okay well you know the rules are changed you know once there's martial law on the streets the rules are changed you know what i mean you can do whatever you got to do and like you know what i'm saying so people were like ready we were ready to just reclaim the space as our own which i think we've the garden really fulfilled on you know what i mean i remember sitting with you um in your apartment it was like winter time bernie yeah. just lost <laughs> yeah 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 we were just bummed there's pandemic was was hitting us hard yeah. everyone was quarantined locked down and you're just sitting there like man like i need to be growing my own food like what am i doing yeah like, i don't know if i'm where if i'm gonna have access oh to i food. said that i actually said yeah that. you said that yeah. yeah you're just sitting there you're just like well, bro i need to be you're like depressed you're like hey, why am I, even doing this? I was so paranoid that the world was collapsing <laughs> which it was and it yeah. kind of will continue to i think but i was so paranoid that i was like well, when the grocery stores close, bro, like, fuck. Yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> when the grocery stores close, what are you going to do, bro? If you don't <laughs> got produce that you can barter for and trade some other shit for, if you don't got your own food supply, like, what are you going to do, bro? <laughs> just so, yeah, there's just a feeling of being so totally dependent on yeah these things that these whole huge industries these yeah. massive industries and these lines of distribution that yeah. you don't understand at all you have no idea where things are <laughs> happening what's happening so in them who's doing what like it's just yeah. there's just all these steps in the middle and it's so it's such an uncertain feeling when you don't know chaotic if it's gonna if it's gonna be there tomorrow yeah, exactly. too if, if unstable if it could close the next day just collapses I remember what the the time that um, the grocery store I went to just closed. Yeah, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> the one by Ken. I don't even have. I don't have a car. Um, yeah, the fresh grocery. Fresh grocery. Like, yeah, you're like, fuck. They can just they can just do that. Like, holy shit, we're just on the whim of yeah. whatever the hell's happening in yeah. the market. And the best part is they didn't close it and like put something else in it they closed it to make it a more expensive looking pen like ivy league ass grocery store instead of a perfectly functioning gross well perfectly functioning is a great gro gross overstatement but a, a grocery store that had food basically like just on the whim of someone who's like yeah but i want it to look fancier you know I mean? <laughs> yeah. and then like for like yeah. a year and a half people don't get like a good produce because uh, they don't have a, a local supermarket yeah it's fucking hard to find good produce out here. That's why also 
this is why we're fucking growing in ourselves. You go to the fucking store. Not, and it's through, like, not through the traditional no. um, Routes. avenues. Yeah. yeah. Like, so what? Tell me what happened. Um, talk about what happened when we first started. When we first put in that first day of work, and talk about like what happened after that. Like what the leasing company did after. Right. That. So. To, yeah, so that's the background of it. I guess I was all paranoid and stuff. I was ready to do whatever. We were doing whatever we wanted, and we started the garden. And it wasn't, it didn't take long. <laughs> you know, I thought it was kind of like perfect timing that we started it, and then they started to come back in person, but, or started to come around more. But we had started it. We just broke that, these rotting picnic tables, right? We broke them up, started like weeding stuff, taking stuff out the ground, trying to frame out a plot. And then I had been on like the, there's like a balcony thing. It's like a balcony, but it's not really technically a balcony. It's just technically like a rooftop. So you're not really supposed to be out there, but it's basically shaped like a fucking balcony. So I was just using it as a balcony so that I could be outside, but at the same time yeah. still be quarantining, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and like see people. And like, that was like, I don't know. You're not supposed to do that or whatever. So like one day, <laughs> I don't, cause, cause I, because there's a rule that doesn't mean anything, but you're not supposed to do it, I guess. <laughs> so, like, one day, the, the leasing office came back in person. People were back in the office, and the dude, Jason, who was a previous, like, leasing office manager, or property manager for this property by this terrible company called Cross Properties, which owns a bunch of real estate uh, in West Philadelphia and in, like, like Malvern and, like, corporate plazas and shit. And, um... And they're just, yeah, I mean, it's just a terrible corporation, basically, you know, it's a real estate corporation, they're landlords, so but they, so they, they sent Jason out to, you know, look at the property first time for like a couple months from like not, from just neglecting it. <laughs> and, um, what and he do? saw, he, what he, well, <laughs> what it's funny do? because he saw, I had an extension cord running from my room on the third floor, out my door, under my door, down the stairs, out the window to like hang from the balcony. <laughs> and so I was like, and I had, I remember this cause I, I was like, I live here now, this is mine. I like moved all this furniture up into the balcony. There was like a, a there was a umbrella and like a chair, one of those blue chairs. So I, I had set up, I was set up. Like, I was like, this is the end of the world. This is mine now. I'm going to have to defend it when the cops come and raid it. You know what I mean? So, and he walked in and like walked up to the second floor and saw all that. <laughs> And then walked outside and saw the like picnic bench table broken and like and shit and was like knocked on my door and he was I remember he was like um, I can't remember what he said but he, I was he was like I've seen is that is that you out on the balcony because he looked and saw <laughs> the extension cord going under my door Hard to and deny I that and one. I and I looked down and, I, and that then one. I smiled and I just was like. Um, Oh, you see my setup? <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. And I was like, and I, was just, <laughs> I knew he was going to be pissed. So I was just fucking goofing, bro. I was just like, it's pretty sick, right? <laughs> and then he was like, yeah, that's a leasing violation. And uh, what you guys did out in the back is a leasing violation. And like, I could be kicking you out right now, blah, 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 blah. Basically threatening to evict me like on site. And I was like, I don't even know what I said. I was like, all right, well, I'll, I won't i will do it, I guess. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I'll take my stuff away. And really that started a saga of, from then until now, a complete all out fucking war, a class war, one could say, um, from the landlords and the fucking cross properties, the corporation that like owns, quote unquote, owns and manages this space and the people who live here and are actually doing good things for it. So from that moment on anytime we did something anytime we like basically started to improve the space they would get mad at us like i put up these lights that they had because the lights were down and i remember jason came through one day and was like oh you can't put your own lights up we have to buy the lights and put them up so then he made me he he took them down and then I was like, okay, that's just stupid. Like, <laughs> and then bought his own lights, but had to wait three weeks to install it, of course. You know what I mean? So we basically were like, I don't know. 
I think it was like kind of pathological for Jason too and the people that worked here because they were like, oh, this is our little space where we, you know, get all these, we have an easy job and we don't really do shit. We don't really take care of this place. And then here we are as residents doing it ourselves, basically. We got more drip than them, basically, is what I'm saying. We have way more swag, and I think there was a little bit of jealousy, you know? <laughs> there was jealousy that it's like, how dare you, like, care and, like, actually do something, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, how, why don't you just fucking, like, go along with the shit business model, like, be in here for a year and leave and hate, hate it, you know? And we, I think, because there was a culmination of a bunch of people who had been living there now for, like, not going on two years because people didn't move for covid because a lot of people were going to leave covid and then people stayed so there was a lot of people who had lo lived here for more than six months more than a year because most of these places right these like you know real estate owned places people they they move people in and out that's like how they make their money with these shitty college kids and shit and just get you in you don't know how to rent you don't know what you're doing they get you to sign some shit it's a terrible place it doesn't look like how it actually looks nothing really functions it's overpriced. You steal your security deposit. Uh, but it's fine because you're just going to leave in a year and go somewhere else. You know what I mean? And I think COVID really stopped that business model because everybody here basically, most people stayed, you know, because they were like, oh, well, I can't leave. <laughs> I'm trapped in my house can't, now. Can't tour anywhere else. Yeah. Can't tour. Can't fuck, you know. No so, idea where you're going. So people were here and people were starting to realize like, wow, this place is shit to live long term. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> You know what I mean? So this, this appliances just break. Yeah, things nothing, are just, just breaking. Like, just full neglect, ne yeah, absolute neglect on the people who can't even open something. Yeah, who we like have a, a contract sink. with to you're maintain like drain, it by the law. You're drain in the um, in your sink. You yeah. can't even open it because it's just built. To, there's just something built. Yeah, with the mirror is built right over it. So it's like it's it's so shoddily constructed. It's it's mind-boggling that some of the decisions that were made where like Jordan can't like open her fridge all the way because like, <laughs> yeah. it's at it's so close to the wall because the countertop is like like they ordered one piece and they like couldn't fit it in her weird shape so it's like everything's just scuffed everything's scuffed is basically how to, how I yeah, put it you know it what I mean like nice for like you tour, yeah you walk in you're then, like okay it looks nice and then everything starts to like little like little by little yeah everything starts side. to fall away and it's death by a thousand paper cuts of just tiny terrible things and then one huge thing will break and then you'll just be <laughs> you'll just be like shit out of luck basically and that's yeah that's been the saga of how the landlords the people in power you know who have a business relationship to this place like who own it or whatever you know that's how they think about this place basically is just like well fuck it it's money making money. whatever it's not a place people live yeah it's, it's like whatever money. you know what i mean who cares like they're gonna be gone they i remember for this new our new newest like uh property manager because jason quit <laughs> after they knew everyone was gonna move out because they're basically upping the rent and they're basically crowding people out like i'm leaving this place because they upped the rent on me basically so to get us to leave hundred dollars yeah hundred dollars we already have to pay it's already so overpriced and then well i'm getting up to two hundred dollars a month mine would be 14 Christ. and then i would have to pay every utility and then nothing would work still <laughs> so it's just like i just can't yeah i can't afford that <laughs> like who who can afford to do like that's that just doesn't make any sense it's just not sustainable so yeah with that with everything they've been doing with their business model it's just been unsustainable basically it's just a race to the bottom to get the cheapest most fastest buck in and out and it's just like destroying this place you know and it's sad to see that um especially considering all the work that like a lot of neighbors did put in to this place you know and a lot of work we put in um you know but that that's just how it is like so it's, it's a constant battle i guess so um after the first couple of days of work yeah where we um uh, we put we started planting stuff um, we had a couple of weeks where we were growing things and then um, we were digging in the dirt and then you remember the day that like Mari and Benny came up to us oh, and just started talking to one. us that's a good one and um, we just like made these friends from just doing stuff in, yeah. the, in a space that there are other people who mm -hmm. were living in 
and they were they were very excited that yeah. we were growing things out here and they you know immediately realized like oh yeah they, oh, yeah. they don't do anything out here this this place is it's treated like crap yeah and um well i think they were talking they were literally told me that they were they had seen each other out and were talking every now and again and they were saying it'd be cool to start a garden in here i think so we literally came and we literally synchronized you know what i mean like something's a good and then idea we just executed you know? it's gonna bound to happen like that's a good idea people are gonna think of it yeah that's the way a lot of this is a little tangent here but that's the way yeah. a lot of our society is true is backwards we think <laughs> like everything is is run by people the big the big smart people with the ideas <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Steve Jobs, of, the Jobs creator. You know, a lot of a lot of that's just just something people think of yeah. because of the the stuff they've learned in the in the same period of time, yeah. with the same stuff that's going on. It's like I'm sure there's thirty, three hundred, fifty thousand Steve Jobs yeah. who just didn't have the the kind same place, luck, money, the same, yeah, they, just, they had the <laughs> same ideas. Powers. People yeah. just thinking, oh, I wonder if we can have an operating system that... Yeah. I mean, he didn't even figure that one out. He just kind of... He was a marketer. He, yeah, was, yeah. he didn't <laughs> program. Let's, this is getting way <laughs> off topic here. But no, I but. see what you mean, though. Is like the... Like Newton and Leibniz co-invented calculus on yeah, their own. Yeah, at the same time. Because you know all, this, I mean? all the stuff was there yeah. for it. Like when the, when, the, when the thing is right, it will happen, basically. Probably, just jump on yeah. the ride. And so make are, sure you get on and the train and those you don't are the, miss it. Those are know? the people who are published, too. I'm sure there's... Right. Like, you I know, mean, there's probably humanity other, civilizations. A yeah, hundred other people in their, in their living rooms just thinking about it. Like, oh, yeah. what if we like calculated like the rate of that? <laughs> huh, that'd be cool. And I just didn't do anything yeah. about it, but those guys did it. They were in, they were professors and shit. Right. So, you know, everybody's us, got we, good ideas. Like it's just about who executes. You know what I mean? We just started putting it in motion. Yeah, right? exactly. But that's all it takes. It's just the yeah, start. The people know? were there. The people who the other people who saw it, who who recognized that it, it just it made sense. Yeah. It was just rational. Right. You know, why not grow yeah. stuff out here? That's the one one thing I was just thinking about the other day is like with all this gardening stuff and that and all this guerrilla gardening and just doing it on your own like we found so quickly and I keep finding this that like it becomes you do it you start it and it you like this I, this would always happen to me as a kid <clears throat> before I like knew I was a leftist I guess like I would have these ideas about and things that I would I thought were like perfectly normal and rational things like like this like why well, yeah why wouldn't you grow your own food like yeah. people around me would like say it's like insane some strange yeah know. some strange like why would you Have do that some weird, whatever rational yeah. explanation well it can't work because blah 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 uh, some and then uh, things and then things that those people thought were normal i usually thought were insane you know what i mean so like i feel like that's another divide i think with the neighbors and i guess people it kind of felt like the chaos that was created brought a lot of people into the same headspace that yeah. you, you and I have been living in for a while. For a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is good. It really, it really pushed people to the left. Yeah. The whole, I think, the whole COVID, hopefully, on the whole, I mean, definitely there was a lot of uh, right-wing groups going too, but like a lot of radicalization at least. Yeah. And once people are, are radicalized, you know, things start actually moving because people aren't doing politics just to talk about politics, you know what I mean? People are doing it to actually make things happen like this, you know what I mean? Physically change and rearrange things in the world and how, you know, things are distributed. Yeah. And I think, I guess that's why gardening becomes radical because you're just changing, you know, by, by doing your own thing, you're like undermining someone's business model, which is like, grow food in one spot like thousands of miles away and ship it with huge complex systems and you know put all these herb aside and whatever versus someone just doing it in their backyard or on their block with whatever is like you know relatively you know organic like but it just makes so much more sense that like why would I not do it you know what Man, I mean? why not and it be yeah it becomes radical because the why not just because it's the, the, why not the only reason why not yeah it's just 
because that's how they get you as a grocery store you don't have a why not like if people don't think like it's you know the power right yeah like it's, that's if you have reason. a garden in a grocery store you're gonna be like why would i not go from the garden fresh but if you don't have a garden then you're like oh i have to go to the grocery store it's where i have to get everything you have to get so, your money yeah you so it, be dependent on them right you depend on like you know the state and bureaucracy and the police to guard the grocery stores and you know what i mean so like it just really frees you you know it really frees you from a lot of uh capitalist institutions which have taken things like food like fucking food like how are you gonna take food bro come on food and living like seeds like water it comes from the ground you know what i mean people have patents yeah, on grows. seeds yeah. and shit like i mean we're we're just so, tending to them they're doing the plants yeah, are doing all the work right it's not us and just by living yeah so uh, talk about that day that you went to um 676 and oh are you gonna go there yeah that's a big moment should we do yeah. we should do the well yeah that was a crazy day that was a crazy day we i had oh you know what dude that's a long ass fucking story but i remember in the morning it was the day before rick krajewski's race was done right yeah. and yeah. so we were like i was like i don't want to do electoral politics i don't want to do this but i had like you had promised someone, I think, that you would get me, and then I promised that I would get you, or I, that I would go and do it for you and shit. So I was like, all right, I'll go fucking, I was just putting up flyers to, like, vote tomorrow, like, you know, for Rick Rajewski, one eighty-eight, which is, like, stupid, because they were going to win, but whatever. <laughs> and so, <laughs> at this point, like, all the Bernie stuff collapsed, you know. Everyone we were putting, was, yeah, everyone just, just was like, ah, yeah. I guess we'll do this, and then... They yeah. got like a massive surge in, yeah. in volunteers and money. So we were so alienated from doing electoral politics, but like it was just like, all right, let me just do this one last thing. And then, I mean, actually, it was basically the moment that kind of radicalized me fully against electoral politics because I was just on Baltimore Ave and just like tr fighting with this fucking tape gun to like tape a goddamn flyer up. And it just like wouldn't work. And I was like, bro, this is like a sign. You know what I mean? Like, I can't remember who said this, but someone said, like, the universe, it doesn't, like, tell you anything. It doesn't make sense, but it gives you hints. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, like, that was, like, it's like, why? Is, this is just not working. And it was, like, I could see it metaphorically, the universe giving me a hint, bro. And I was, like, I'm over this. I was, like, finished. I posted for, like, three blocks. I was, like, I'm done. <laughs> and then I was, like, walking back. And then Jason called me. And Jason, this is at the beginning of all of this. Jason called me, you know, again, just bitching at me because the more and more we had done in the ground planning stuff. And then I totally, you know, I totally snapped and I was like, well, like, fuck you. Like, we live there. Like, I don't think you understand what's happening. Like, there's like people getting killed in the streets. Like, there's no more. Dude, I was fully jokerified. I was like, there's no more laws, bro. They don't make, they don't mean anything. Okay. So your piece of paper that says whatever, it doesn't mean anything. I live there. I'll do whatever I want there blah 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 and then he was still bitching at me and then i was like i i kind of bluffed it because i was thinking about we could do a rent strike but i literally had like told three people that and i was like all right well, well we t we knocked doors but before that hadn't we well, we had knocked doors but we did not do we did not do any organizing for a rent strike but i was just like yeah we could have though i was i was i was kind of bluffing but i was like yeah like fucking because if you don't do if you don't like help us do what we're gonna do we're not gonna pay rent basically and then i think that really scared jason because he immediately changed his toe and was like oh well why don't we meet then and we'll, we'll you, you'll tell us what resources you need and i was like yeah that's right and so that happened and i was and that just like kind of clicked in my mind i was like okay that's kind of how you do politics basically you know what i mean it's about not force. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's, it's not, not about playing nice. Yeah, it's not about like, oh, I put my flyer up and I feel good. I mean, sometimes you, know, you need to do groundwork like that, but like, you know what I mean? It's not about being like, I have put an image up for people to see. It's about like, no, this is what we're fucking doing. And like, it's do or die. If you don't accept it, then fuck you. We're going to fucking fight you all out. You know what I mean? And yeah. you better. He was like a, a Nixon type character because it was like super far right, but he knew. He was scared of like actual leftist organizing, so he fucking. That's when we started to get the grill back and all the new picnic tables and stuff. 
is right after then. That's when they started sharpening up, you know what I mean? So, and then, um, but yeah, so I had called him, had that crazy conversation with him that like had literally, it was like a radicalizing moment. And then right then there was a PSL protest happening in the city. And I was like, I think that's why too, I cut the fly ring early. Cause I was like, I want to miss this protest. You know, they're like walking all the way from the police station down to, uh, I think they were supposed to walk down to the PMA at Philadelphia Museum or and so I hopped on my bike and shit from I was in West just finished the firing had that phone call <laughs> hopped on my bike and just immediately biked into the city and I basically the protest was marching all the way down from the police station so it was coming to me west and I was going east and I literally met the front of it so then I was literally at the front of this huge protest and we we're going down like Ben Franklin Ave towards the PMA. And then somebody just starts turning and I'm like, oh shit, I, you know, with like protests and shit, sometimes they keep their route like secret or like change it up so that the cops don't like, you know, can follow you. You like, you know, run away from them a little bit. You like go, go on a wild goose chase. So I think somebody was like, all right, let's go left. I don't know if it was planned. I don't know if they meant to do this or not. I, I. I don't know actually I ha have to think about that but it, it to me it seemed kind of spontaneous I don't think the PSL people planned it but the so they went left and then went onto a highway on ramp on you know, interstate 676 like right right across from like right in between Logan Square and PMA and we are just on the highway we shut the whole highway down go in both directions and everybody was just sitting down and it just felt like such a glorious <laughs> momentous like win you know what i mean like it felt like a civil rights win or something like we shut down like a major route of commerce you know what i mean for this message and shit um and i knew i was kind of waiting for something like that to happen to where like you know like because that feels more like a strike to me i feel like you know withholding labor power and resources is really what you need to get attention. So it's like, when are we gonna like shut the highway down? When are we gonna like, you know, protest in front of some building and like, you know, like not let people into the police state, you know, do some direct action like that. And so, yeah, it was like a really glorious moment because I just had that conversation with Jason and just put him in my place, in his place, bro. And fucking like, now we're on the highway and we're shutting this shit down. And we're like walking towards, back towards uh, the police station on the highway. As traffic was stopped everybody was like beeping and looking it was like a crazy scene and there's like a bunch of people on the fucking highway at this point like 300 people probably and we're all like marching back east towards the police station on 676 and like we all advanced forward like a block or two um and then you can see in the distance we start seeing there's like a line of like SWAT uh like fully kitted up SWAT people like way in the distance on 676 because police stations at like 10th I think so do you remember they had like bus they had like shut down the highways sometimes and they were like busing people like busing SWAT people yeah. back and forth and state troopers yeah. so they were using it as like a staging area so they had already been down there like guarding it and stuff and um and the first I remember too like um the first day of the craziness they lit a state trooper car which was on the highway on ramp on fire so like the highway was kind of like a contentious area already um for like land grabbing basically because that's a route of commerce you know if you shut down the highway you lose a lot of fucking money so they were down there like 10 blocks down there like all menacingly <laughs> like all like no like all in shadow basically all like black um and so everybody had stopped and so now we're kind of like uh, all, right before uh, like an underpass you know what I mean so um, some of it is like tunnel and then some of it's like open so we were very kind of trapped in there and that's when I started realizing I was like kind of having a bad feeling and shit bro because they started uh, like shooting you know in the shoot tear gas at like a grenade launcher and it like pops and it's just like boom like it sounds like a firework but it's just like a it's like you know just some gas or something it's not that big a deal but like it just like that sound so they one of them shot one of those and that sound like scared the shit out of me and it jolted me and then i was realizing like oh this is not gonna be a good time bro and like some of these 
state trooper dudes were like walking up and spraying people with like pepper spray and CS gas and stuff. It's just, and then, um, so people had kind of had a line. And then I remember all of a sudden, I, it didn't feel that bad though. I felt like we still had control, but like the crowd at least, but I changed really quickly. Cause like all of a sudden, um, I look behind me and there's like, like the cars that were backed up behind us that were on the, from the opposite way we were going, were all like gone and like out of the way and like cop cars and like SWAT vans and like MRAPs were like pulling up and like they were all like advancing <laughs> so fast and I was like, oh fuck. So I was like on the far right wall of it and like, so there was a wall next to me, you know what I mean? And not, the grass was on the other side. So I had to take my, I had a bike, you know, all I had a fucking bike with me and like hopped over the median to the other lane and then ran up to this grass. Um, and the way it's situated is that we were like in between um, two overpasses basically. So there's like a tunnel to our left, a tunnel to our right. And then there's like one like grassy knoll to get out of on one side. Um, so we're all like scrambling basically to get out of there. And like all the, all the state troopers are like super advanced up now. So there's like a line of like SWAT and state troopers on one side and like all these police vehicles on another side and we're all just on this like grassy hill and we're all just like hopping there's a fence to get like out back to um like the benjamin franklin parkway um and everybody's like hopping it but it's like super high in parts so i remember i like brought my bike up to like one high part and was like hoisting people up and then i noticed they were like throwing tear gas but i was like i dude i was so bummed honestly because i was like oh this might happen and i brought goggles and i brought water and shit like i was ready bro but my goggles were like broken so like i had goggles on and then i was like i thought it was fine but then it like i remember one of the tear gas just like landed right in front of me the cs gas or whatever it landed right in front of me and i like had water i got it out tried to like pour on it, it like didn't do anything and then it got like in my goggles because they were broken so then there was like cs gas just like in my goggles in front of my eyes and at that point, I was just like, fuck, well, I don't know if I'm gonna make it out of here. That felt crazy, honestly. It was probably one of the most terrifying moments of my life. Like, if, cause it felt like, I didn't think, I really didn't think tear gas would be that bad. I guess I had underestimated <laughs> the war crime ability of this uh, municipal government. But like, it felt like, like getting waterboarded with air, basically is how I would describe it. Like, it felt like, like you would grasp for air it would like dry your lungs out so bad you'd grasp you know like grasp for air and then um you just breathe in more gas and then so it was just like a positive feedback loop until you just like couldn't you couldn't like function anymore you were just on the ground coughing basically and it never felt like you were going to catch your breath like you were just going to drown there and like so that's yeah that's what it fucking felt like so and at this point i don't like i didn't see any of this but like or i didn't see most of this escalate because i was it getting in like a world war one-esque mustard gas cloud you know but like apparently there was like a fucking helicopter too with like that loud alarm system thing going crazy that they have that like it just it's such a loud noise it like hurts your eardrums and you run away and they were dropping tear gas from that, you know what I mean? Which is like reminiscent of, you know, the, what's that bombing here that happened here? Um, the move bombing, you know, which Philadelphia has a history of fucking dropping chemical weapons on their civilians uh, from helicopters, which is a crazy thought that, you know, it came back out. But um, I guess that was always there, you know what I mean? But like it's rare you have the moments where the cops really just like they hold back for as long as they possibly can cops have the most patience in some weird sense or the people who direct them have a lot of good patience and they hold back until one time when they get the go ahead you know what i mean and then people go insane and start killing people it's pretty crazy but and brutalizing people and using chemical warfare and shit but yeah, it was insane to be in those one in that 
one time, you know what I mean? The one out of 100 that really proves like what the police do, you know, which is like a force to like protect like shipping containers going down the road, you know, over people's lives and shit. Um, and they'll like, yeah, they'll do, you know, chemical warfare against you, which is like, you know, the USA went to war with Syria for Assad doing an alleged chemical warfare attack like that. So like, you know what I mean? People go, we're going to war with people doing when well, we're doing the same shit to our own people. You know what I mean? So it's just crazy to think about, but um yeah that shit happened i fucking fell down the hill just coughing and i by the grace of god they were they were just like snatch a grab so like they were like directing people off and then like one out of every 10 person they take and fucking arrest and i wasn't that one out of 10 so i they're like all right go 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 it was really weird sadistic it was like they were trying to like look um yo you could just leave it out there I c i'll get it and put it in soon what's up Sorry, just talking to the male dude. <laughs> um, I can do good. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, I, well, I mean, I made it out. Um, I was on the highway. I was walking off the off ramp, and then I look back, and there's just like an insane amount of, like, once again, just vehicles, just military style vehicles, just descending on the scene. And, um, that's when I was like, I mean, fuck. I mean, that's that. At that point, I was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. It looked like a war zone. It looked like civil war. It really did. Um, it really looked like all out war. So I, I started just walking away. Got some milk in my eyes. Started fucking walking away. Um, and uh, I remember this dude, and like a like a black nissan pulled up <laughs> and he had seen me and shit just like knew i was fucked up and he was like hey man we fight together and i was like yeah man that's the real shit but i was so i was just dead as fuck dead as shit i went to pains and i remember i fucking got a my my homie tev gave me a, a tall boy <laughs> and it tasted amazing i never liked beer but in that moment bro Anything anything to drink just felt like divine. But yeah, I came back here. Honestly. That's what I had to do. I knew I had to do that. I had to come back here. Came right back here. It was like weren't it was you and Mario were here, right? And Vinny or some shit, I guess. Yeah, I'm Vinny. And I was just like, fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? Told everybody what happened and shit. And but yeah, I mean now that I look back on it, like you said, like if I, I was just thinking about that the other day, like, bro, if I did not have the garden and that happened to me, I would be, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how I would have dealt with it, like, how I would have coped, you know what I mean? It was such a, because this is such a, like, that sounds corny, but it's such a, like, a healing space, you know what I mean? Like, it really just calms you and just opens you up, like we're doing right now, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't usually be speaking so candidly about some of these things, you know, with just neighbors walking by, but, like, you know, it just breaks breaks down barriers, you know, for you to, like, process things and move on. And that's really important, you know what I'm saying? So I was really I was really thankful to come back to you guys in this place, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, what I would have done without it, you know? That was a crazy day. A lot of crazy days like that, honestly, in the yeah. quarantine, where... Yeah. You think that like changed how you viewed this space? Uh, I don't think I would, it. Well, yeah, yeah, because like I said, it, it made me realize, oh, this is more. Because the beginning, I was like, all right, let's get food going. I was like very kind of utilitarian about it, and then the more and more I did it, the more, and the more I f <laughs> failed at growing, you know, because it was like the first time doing this shit. I see you doing everything all crazy good, and I was like. Oh, damn you're so good fuck i don't know why i can't do this bro what the fuck <laughs> so i was like just kind of feeling like arrange like the architecture of it you know what i mean like arranging the space and like making it something good which is why i was like really happy mari you know and um oh who's uh taz mari and taz really helped out two uh, other neighbors 
helped out like crafting things you know what i mean yeah like that was really fun for me too is like building furniture and shit like built a bar and i never thought i'd be able to do that you know but like yeah, it's just really easy just literally from stuff i we found basically in like a home depot or run or two you know pretty damn good yeah honestly um so like that was like wait what was the question <laughs> you feel like a change the experience changed the way you view yeah so like i was already thinking about it like not I mean, at the beginning, yeah, I was thinking just food, and then I was learning slowly, like, oh, it's more than just, like, survival or food. It's, like, metaphysically has, like, a, a state of mind to it that helps people. It helps change their consciousness, you know what I mean? It helps them understand the shared space, and it helps you, like, emotionally. It helps you physically, you know what I mean? And it changes. It just, it's a rearrangement of the space for the better, you know, to better the community. So that's, you know, you can have a farm, you know what I mean? Or you can have a garden. I think that's the difference between a farm and a garden, usually, you know? Garden, there should be a community around it. Farm, there's a farmer, you know, and some employees, probably. So, that really made me realize that, coming back and being like, oh, okay, this is more than just food, you know what I mean? And I think that, like, moment and, like, having that happen to my close friend um, was like a very um, it, it like almost kind of made me feel like you know like let's like fuck this yeah like let's just go all in yeah and when so he told me about the meeting that was coming up it just felt like Let's yeah, just get everything. That Let's just get tell everything <laughs> fucking going. Yeah. The meeting he set up with Jason the day before, uh, or the same day actually. Yeah. That the morning. <laughs> um, same fucking day. It was just like, let's just fucking, we're gonna go all in on this. Yeah. Like we're gonna. Dude, it was perfectly orchestrated too. How we executed. Perfectly orchestrated. Cause yeah, I, I that day that six seventy six happened, I called. Like I said, I called Jason in the morning. Had that whole spiel. And he, he said, yeah, well, all right, well, let's have a meeting, you know, you can tell me what you need, blah, blah. And so, yeah, you suggested, like, let's just bring everybody out there. And so I was like, all right, yeah. So we just invited every neighbor we knew at that point to come out. We knocked did we have every a, door. Did we have a group chat at that point? I don't remember. I think we literally talked to people. We talked to people. We Grassroots we organizing. We, but I think we did have a group chat at that point. Yeah. We might have, I don't remember. We were like interfacing with the whole community basically that we knew. We up did to that at point. least, we probably knocked on at least doors at least twice. 20, yeah. And then we distributed flyers too. Yeah. And we realized, I think we put it together, we're like, all right, he thinks it's just going to be Phil yeah, that's yeah. showing up there. <laughs> and it's going to be, it's going to be weird if there's multiple people. <laughs> if we can get, it's a good play. if we can get 10 people yeah. there. <laughs> the dude's gonna shit his pants exactly just outnumber him yeah people's army yeah so, so i brought you know he doesn't know everyone there so yeah. i came i don't live here but i came Fuck i brought it. my yeah, girlfriend like, <laughs> I brought bring all the <laughs> everyone i could yeah. find <laughs> yeah so then yeah it was and it was yeah, like i said it was perfect timing too because i was out there early he came it was just me and then mari came so then it was just us and he was like oh i didn't know why he's gonna be here and then you came and then amanya was there too and he was like oh you know these people are gonna be here and then all the neighbors came out jeremy and you know, he came out and then two other neighbors came out taz came out i think joe was there and so all of a sudden no, we're, just, we're just i'm just we're, we're just, just, just sitting there and we're, we're just, just sitting there, there and we're just start we're just surrounding him yeah we're just surrounding just him. all by his lonesome and we're all just listing off things we want like, <laughs> yeah another grill would be good and, um, <laughs> i think we'll take two picnic tables yeah and we'll we'll probably do everything we'll probably garden everywhere not that well okay well it's a bit and stupid the, the all right one whatever thing you did was just like all right well maybe just not <laughs> not that wall. wall yeah that <laughs> We're doing the back. All right, fine, <laughs> fine. We won't do that. But the, that the one spot in the back wall. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna guard the back wall. <laughs> yeah, we have the, we have the. You know, <laughs> don't tell anybody, bro. We got the redacted in there right now. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. There's no evidence that in, that's in Minecraft. Yeah. Come on, man. Allegedly, <laughs> I'm allegedly doing this. No proof. <laughs>
Um, yeah. And then, um, and then it was all ours from there, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, we kind of put him in his place. Like that was like the second or third time we really won the battle. He and retreated, basically let us do whatever we want at that point. You know, we just the space was ours to do everything we wanted with it, and um, to the point where. You know, they basically started exploiting the f all the yes, the yes. value of the property we were putting into it. And we yes, were, we if you were, if you, you go to sending out emails saying yes, hey, check yes, out yes. the community, new community garden that um, you know contact Phil. Yeah, and well, then, I made the, we I made them send an email out, and that was one of the demands in the in the meeting. I was like, all right, you should communicate this to everyone and tell them that it, it's me who's doing it. Yeah, <laughs> he was right. like, all right, yeah. Yeah, I know. But yeah. to this day, they still have, if you go, first of all, don't live here, people. Every People that I know <laughs> keep living here, don't do it. The <laughs> Legacy of Palatin Village, if you go search that up on Google, you go to the first results, their website, they have, in the amenities section, they have a bunch of pictures of the garden in there, bro. All the shit that we did. And they be having tours here, you know, same, telling Sorry, people, yeah, look, oh, look, look at this, look at how, that they, it's that so hard to find really, this really in the city. Stop. Yeah, yeah. And don't tell them that it was us who did it, the residents. <laughs> so I have to be out here. I had to, the last two weeks was literally me just being out here as much as I possibly could. Every time a tour came through, I'd be like, hey, are you going to tell them that like we did this and shit? <laughs> it got like really awkward when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and shit. or like the tour would end and i i wouldn't say anything and then when the dude would leave i'd be like hey don't live here don't do this it's bad and they're like oh thank you for telling it i did that to like at least three people and then the person i did that to yesterday was like oh, i already signed but thanks man <laughs> oh no yeah too so late. too late yeah, too little too late. people keep moving in here bro it's fuck they keep whatever it's just the scam keeps going you know what i mean Capitalism just the longest scam in history. <laughs> oh my just god. Just a big Ponzi scheme. Um any cool. other stories? I mean, from there it was just like it was just like a flow. It know? was on go, yeah. It was it just was like, it was on go. It's like we won this battle and then all of a sudden it was like this cap of like of this like freedom just opened yeah. up and it was like I had never felt that in my life either. I had never felt that either. It was yeah. like a whole, this whole aspect of my personality yeah, and yeah. like who I was just got to come out. Yeah. It was like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. Like it really brought the best out of the best and the worst out of people. I think, you know? Yeah. It, and we, you know, we, we got to, we got to work through some, 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 some social conflict. conflicts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely if socialism becomes yeah. a thing, like. That's gonna be the dude, new that's, contradiction. I 100% agree. Just it's petty, like jealousy, petty Yeah, stupid. Gonna be coming out. Stupid like conflicts. I'm like, I want to do it like this. No, I don't want to do it like this. No. Oh my god, dude. Like moving. My fake sex. Yeah, I did that out. Yeah. I did. But yeah, um, what were we talking about? I, we keep this. I just keep going on tangents now. We're just all the creativity we got to put. Oh into yeah, it. yeah. And all those things we got to learn about gardening. Building, arranging, painting, and composting. Just like about so much knowledge other, gained. About, you know, just like how, how when you take a space, you know, you, you, you can flourish. Like people yeah. just, just get to learn and get to make their own mistakes and get to do the, do what they want to do. And, yeah, and, for themselves. And, um, and and create things that they want to create yeah and just be be people yeah just like, to live be people. to live that's just yeah. living and that's not, the... and not have to worry about all these yeah. fucking these lords yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that 99 percent of people are always are not, fighting like, yeah. and being i mean not even i mean i wish they were always fighting them, no but yeah being, being oppressed being by them. yeah beaten down it's, it's, so um i think that's I mean, uh, that's for really me, this place is, just, is the future. Yeah. This, no, this, really. This, this is no, like, that's real shit. This is what life is going to have to be like, and it should be like, you know? And it's, it's a long time will, coming. It's what life will be yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. It's the only way it can... It's the only way it can keep going. Yeah. I mean, that, I think that's... Uh, I don't mean to toot our own horns, obviously, but, like, this is, like... Well, I mean, like we said, everyone it's needs not to like we, do. It's not like we came up with this. Like, this has been around yeah. for... 
for forever. Yeah, everyone's doing this actually. If yeah, you look I'm sure. I'm sure that yeah, there's shit. There's shit Especially everywhere. Philly, dude. Yeah, and Philly. That's why Philly's amazing. There's stuff like this, this is, everywhere. There's, this is just one, one node one in a complex cell, mesh. Yeah. One cell in a, in a whole organism. It's starting to really grow. Like um, a seed, man. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know. You feel like we should end. We should end it. Here. I think yeah. I think that's about it. I don't really have anything else to add. Um, I guess I just want to. The conflict is the real story, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah. That's the only thing people care about in our society. Yeah. So I mean, the, everything's the story. You know what I mean? But like. The conflict with the. With uh, Ford and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the end too. You know, that was funny to find oh, out yeah. afterwards that. Jason had quit, and that Ford, uh, there's a new manager. Yeah. <laughs> because he... <laughs> yeah. The way I look at it is that Jason was like a Nixon or like a Trump or like a a and George Ford, Bush Ford, who... Ford's an Obama. Yeah, and Ford's, no, Ford's an impeccable Obama. It's so hard to get mad at him because he's just always like, oh, I'm sorry, like, I don't... I'll try my best, like, I'll... But then I'll, behind I'll the do, scenes, he'll fuck you. Yeah, he'll fuck you, and he won't do anything, and it's incompetent still, and it doesn't work, and people are getting Legionnaires, pneumonia, or whatever the fuck diseases people are getting. Everyone's getting sick in this building. You know, it's just crumbling, but it's, like, people aren't motivated to, like, fight against him because there's not someone doing, like... Like, Jason did audacious, asshole things, you know what I mean? And so it would, like, kind of be like, he said, what? What? Come on. No, all right, we're doing this, you know, in the time period... And now we're in the Biden, you know, Obama area era, and everyone is like, oh, I guess it's fine. I mean, I'm just gonna have to do this, and it's, you know what I mean. So it's been hard to. We're back to. We're back to square one, you know, but that's how it is. Um, yeah, back to normal. Uh, everyone wants to normal quit their jobs. Everyone yeah. hates this. Because <laughs> this like, is definitely please, normal. See, please don't. But there, it's a lull, you know. It's like a wave, you know, it crests and it dips. Um, and so we're just riding the wave up, and it's it's going. I think it's linear, going up. Right? I think it's going up right now, honestly. Yeah, I think it's about to. It's gonna heat up. I think it's about. I mean, what is today? Today is literally the day where they lift the eviction ban. So literally, it might be tomorrow. <laughs> that it goes crazy. So, yeah, yeah. like L.A. like illegal to be homeless and it's then lift the eviction ban. And it's illegal to live in your apartment. <laughs> so, so I don't know what's do? gonna happen there. Um, other than burn the fucking city down. Yeah, which right? is terrible, but, you know, sometimes you gotta That's burn some I shit down. Do if they're fucking you evicting some, me. Hey, man, sometimes you gotta burn some shit down to, to build homeless. something new, you know? Bro, I just go up to... I'm gonna go fuck what else are you gonna go do? Go crazy, yeah. What, what else are you fuck? gonna do? When you have no home, income source, we'll economic be prospects. Yeah, we'll be out there with those people. Yeah, we'll be there, bro. Because we're next, you know? Yeah. <laughs> really? And because why would you not imagine that? Yeah, bro. why would you not imagine that? that? Some of the people in the, <laughs> yeah, I know, can you imagine some of the people in this quarantine that were just like, oh, I just played Animal Crossing for six months. <laughs> yeah. Really? You just played Animal Crossing for six months straight? That's all you did. You didn't go outside. You didn't see all the people burning police stations down, and you didn't like, you didn't like think to yourself, oh, maybe something's going on, and I should like engage. Some? No, you know what I mean. In the, I mean, that's just the two types of people in the society, you know what I mean? Like, sorry, I mean, I've become a lib too, you know, but like, when when times call, I'll, I'm out. Shit libs are real. I'm out, yeah, but that's the real America. divide in America, really, is the people who, when a push comes to shove, actually do politics the versus libs. the people, yeah, who are basically shit libs and who are brain rot and who are just like, well, we can't do anything. <laughs> We can't do anything until like Nazis come cart them away and they're like, oh, we can't do anything because civility, <laughs> civility. I don't want to call them out because I want to reach out to the right. You know what I mean? And like, hey, I can't wait till the, till the real Nazi candidate comes in. The yeah, I know. And all the uh, girls are going to be there being like, well, he's not as bad as Trump. Yeah. He's not as bad as, as Trump. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you got there's must be a, a, it, like a hornet's nest around here because i saw that <laughs> did you see that big ass one there's so many there's like giant hornets around here i think because they're like the, that there's, big but there must be one pretty yeah. close because yeah i've i've been seeing them there was a second time well I've actually seen i've that seen that two one. in the winter time when all the trees die out just a couple blocks from here i've seen one tree that had like what, three nests three big oh, like wow. bees or hornet's nests 
I mean, and then they all really incredible insects, but terrifying. Dude, Jesus yeah, the Christ. big there's like, I'm not gonna... the life has just popped off so crazy yeah. around here. Like insects are big, every plant is growing huge, everything's growing like super fauna. It's like Nausicaa Valley of the Wind, you know what I mean? Like the <laughs> Like, the cockroaches are huge. Like, everything's big, bro. Like, everything is because there's so much carbon in the fucking atmosphere. And it's I just like, hot. Yeah, I like all your insects. Yeah. People be just, people are just so alienated from life. Yeah. That they're just, like, terrified of, of anything that's different from them. Just isolated in their little, like, sterilized boxes. <laughs> and it's yeah. just so, like... I love it. You know, I love the, the hornets. I mean, I don't want to fucking get yeah. near it, but like the play of everything. Like, look at all these. Them, yeah. If you don't fuck with what them, you, they're not going to come up and sting you. Yeah. Like, I mean, you people, need them to pollinate your shit too. So you need to live with them. You yeah, know they're what still, I mean? they're so you have to coexist. Pollinating. Like, and they literally. See, the other thing too is it's like people are like, oh, sometimes they just come up. And be, there are a lot of yellow jackets around where I grew up. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, sometimes they just sting you for no reason. You don't have to be doing anything. <laughs> Like, that's not true. Probably not. Though. That's probably not, not fucking true. <laughs> yeah. You they sting you because you see them and you freak out. Yeah. And then they freak out and sting you. Yeah. Lived there for fucking ten years. Never got stung by a <laughs> yellow jacket. Come up, they land on me. I just let them fucking fly around. Yeah. And land that's on me. just the bugs around out. me. You just, they just crawl around. Especially and out here. Fly off. Yeah, that's what I realized doing all this and all these bugs. You just let them go. <laughs> they probably think you're part of the ecosystem, just a log or something. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Just like, what is this? Huh? Yeah. All right, should we? <laughs> Let's wrap up. Yeah, I think we're done. That's you it. Wanna, you got any parting words? Uh, I just want to thank everybody, all my friends, all my neighbors, all my yeah. family, all my community members, all my political organizers, all my lovers. Well, not all of them, but... Um, <laughs> uh, um, and everybody that helped out with this amazing space um, for the you know for the best um, and thank you because you really started it I feel like every time people are like oh it's your garden I'm like well you know I get it. Conrad started it did most of the fucking work the first year so um, I first and foremost got to thank you because I wouldn't I wouldn't I would not have done any of this Without your... I mean, I would have done some shit out here, probably. But, like, you know, the garden idea was amazing. And I had never done anything like that. So I really appreciate you introducing me to that world. Because now that's, like, where I kind of want to go, maybe, with my job, hopefully. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I can't believe I didn't do this in, when I was recording. But I want to personally thank uh, all the people who worked on the garden or even touched it and affected it in any way. That's first and foremost, Conrad. I gotta thank Mari, of course, and Terry, all their homies. Uh, Mari put, like, some of the most work into that garden. I gotta thank Taz and Gabriel. Taz especially for painting all those picnic tables and shit. Y'all are crazy. I hope y'all are both doing well. Um, I gotta thank Vinny and shit for meditating with us and watering everything like so much. Big shouts out. Thank you to Hannah and Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy, for buying that saw. That shit <laughs> was very helpful. Thanks to Joe. Shout out to Jordan, actually number one grill homie. That's fucked up what happened to us, bro. We had to move out, but shout out to Jordan. Shout out to Tristan and Kami. Um, fucking always out there, bro. Always using this space. That's fire, bro. Shout out to Zoe and Zach and Harold and just every neighbor, honestly. Yes. And oh, and Shim, of course, bro. Thank you for fucking watering when I left. Thank you to Tiffany. Sorry, all that crazy shit with the fucking piece of shit. Drexel police happened, but thank you for your support, bro. Thanks to Aniksha, Augie for signing petitions and shit. Thank you to Collins for a big donation early on. Thank you to, oh, thank you to Ekram from Good Food Flats for doing organizing over there. 
Thank you to Erica and Roberto. Fucking thank y'all for being there. Thank you to who else? Um, Raza, Raza Ali B103. Shout out to that dude. Shout out to Punit A102. Um, and then shout, I mean, also big thanks and and all of that to to everybody in the neighborhood who helped me with everything. So like Vidya, big shout out. Thank you to Jack for living right there. I had some amazing times with y'all. And everybody, like, we met through you guys. Um, shout out to Logan and Servi and Zoe and Grant. Oh, and Tev, bro, and Enrique, everybody at Payne's. Shout out to um, Anna, too, for helping with plant starts and just helping with the garden a lot as well. And Sloan and everybody at that house. Shout out to Ben and and uh, Ben and fucking Owen and Matt and Malcolm and Adam and Brooklyn, everybody over there in that house. Shout out to y'all and um, Alex and Mark and the other Alex, skate homie Alex, Makai and shout out to Connor and shit. Um, and everybody, I'm sure I'm missing people too, I guess, but thank you, I guess, everybody and anybody who put work into there and, uh, thank you. Oh, and last but not least, bro, shout out to fucking Tommy, the maintenance man. Okay. You did fucking way more than Mike ever did ever. Thank you. Um, thank you to everybody and anybody who I missed that shit. That was a crazy time and place to be, so thank y'all so much. What about you? Any wanna thank anybody? Wanna give any parting wisdom? Uh, just stay communist, I guess, you know, stay communal. Nah, just kidding. No, no, man, thank you. Yeah. I mean this is a this is a great, like, shared experience. Yeah. And um I've got like you know, I feel like I learned so much from you with you. And it was like you know, one of the one life of the, changing. One of the one of the most pleasurable things I've done in my life. Yeah. yeah, I was saying that to Mari, like I will never ever forget about that whole summer for yeah. the rest of my life. Yeah. It even feels like I don't even remember much after quarantine was happening, I don't even remember much that happened before like twenty nineteen. Like like right before it's nothing. Yeah, You're just exactly. sitting around doing school stressing about yeah. like some bullshit the next bullshit yeah. that they telling us is super important yeah. and it's gonna fuck our lives up like i wasn't politically engaged in 2008 at all and then yeah bernie and stuff really slingshot me and then this so it's i don't know it's just crazy to see it's yeah. crazy to see but it's good everybody's going left uh, yeah. you know start a third party man yeah fuck it. let's go go third party <laughs> People's but party. Not, but don't even do electoral politics. No. Do, just do, do electoral party. politics as a meme and then do other things in seriousness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, That's just, my just vote take now. Over. Just Yeah, just start a fucking army. This is third party is a <laughs> conduit for Left an army. militia. <laughs> so just, just, just put a, put a, a union. Yeah. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm going crazy with this. <laughs> yeah, that's true now. That's a wrap. Is <laughs> this button? Uh, hold up. Let me see. Oh shit! Oh nice. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was like, I was thinking that it 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 whatever it was recording. I was just thinking, oh, did it like end like halfway through because my video card? I that's why I had this, but no, everything was good. That was amazing, brother. Yeah, that was good. It was good. It was like therapy. Yeah. All right, let's go cook some yeah. shit, doggy. Look at all the look at all this fucking yeah. harvest, bro. Come on, look at that. Yeah. Yo. Camera performing amazing. Yo, we're gonna make BLTs and then with the tomato stock, we make we're gonna make tomato soup. Soup and then dip it in there, John. Yo, that's gonna go crazy. Wow, that's that worked out perfectly actually. Yo, I love it when a plan just comes together. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's been wow, been a great day. Okay.